Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in honor and memory of my Mendel Island hiking boots. As this video was being released, they are guiding me through the Himalayas to peaks over 6,000 meters, but it will be their last trip. Alas, they have finally let the beatings I've given them over the years take their toll. I met my Nendels on a sunny day in 2009 after a pair of heavy duty hiking boots failed me after just a year and a half. At the time, I worked in the bush in rough remote country with a heavy pack, so I needed good boots. Forest firefighters and guide outfitters in the area all insisted on Mendel's, so off I went to the nearest town, a five hour drive, to get my new boots. That's right, I drove for 10 hours to get these boots. They weren't cheap either, but it wasn't long before I learned what a good hiking boot should be. I'm clumsy, and every time I've stumbled in exhaustion at the end of a long hike or tr tripped while boulder hopping, these boots have been like, I've got this covered. Without big work packs and a tendency to stick to trails and my recreational hikes, I've slowly switched to lighter hiking boots. Since I met Clay, I've been using the Mandels a lot more, even for day trips. He's a big peaker, and as I've mentioned, 30% mountain goat. And my Mandels are the only thing that give me a half decent chance of not breaking a leg trying to keep up with them. Okay, I can't keep up the celebration of life thing anymore. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's talk about like actual review. Like I said, I've had these for eight years. They look beat up. I know they do. Okay, let's start with comfort. They had a very short break-in period. They've never given me any problems. They have a memory foam system with an air active soft print, whatever that is. But whatever it is, it, it, it works. I do wear them with these cheap little gel insoles just for a little bit of extra comfort. Um, as for support, this is the main reason I love them. Even after eight years, the uppers are very supportive. I can step funny on any sort of rock and I'm and I'm just fine. Uh, they feel like, they make me feel like a superhero. I definitely feel it in the soles of my feet if I'm on a rough trail for a few days in anything lighter than this. Plus they have these two sets of walking eyelet doohickeys, which means that I don't need to lace up my boots and readjust them a million times. Soles are awesome. The tread is still going on. They are Vibram multi-griff, specially made for Mendel soles. A little bit of flexibility, enough that it doesn't feel like it affects my gait, but still thick enough that I can boulder hop on some pretty jagged rocks. I've also worn them with my strap-on crampons for some, some milder glacial travel and ice travel. Um, and they work fine. Now these weigh 1.8 kilograms or 3 pounds and 15 ounces and um, that's for the pair. And that may sound like a lot and I know the trend is moving towards more and more ultralight uh, stuff and a lot of people are even wearing trail runners. And that's cool if you're on developed trails and you have light loads but if you're in really rough country or have a heavy load then um, the extra weight is totally worth it, which is why a lot of people who do remote bush work choose Mendel. Aside from support, the other thing that was amazing about these boots is the waterproofness. Aside from really good quality leather, they also have a Gore-Tex lining. In their first season, I did the most difficult trip I've ever done, and besides something like 100 kilometers of really hard bushwhacking, the weather was also um, horrible. There was a lot of mud and a lot of beaver dams to cross and a lot of water coming from the bushes and a lot of streams to cross. And the only reason they didn't hold up was because I decided to wade through a waist deep river because I, I knew or hoped that I'd be at a cabin within a few hours. Since then the waterproofing has slowly worn down thanks to me not necessarily taking the best care of them and getting cracks in them. Now as I've said, they've lasted for eight years and in terms of support, there's still plenty of that. Now bear in mind the five of those years I was using them as work boots, so they were getting they were getting a lot of use. And the waterproofness has only really started to deteriorate in this last year, which is why I'm, I'm getting really close to replacing them. The other thing that actually happened fairly quickly was this rubber band around the edge started to come off a little bit and that was um, an easy fix with some shoe goo. Aside from that, the rivets have held up, the stitching, the original shoelace, um, like I said, the soles uh, have really taken a beating. So yeah, that's eight years of awesomeness. They they cost a lot, but if they last you that long, it's a good investment. So would I recommend this to a friend? Well, it completely depends on what my friend 
does. If they're an ultralight backpacker, then, then no. But if there's someone who needs the extra support for whatever reason and needs the waterproofness, then I would recommend them 110%. And I definitely will be buying these boots again. Okay, and now it's time for the channel of the week. Today's channel of the week is Summit or Nothing. They go into some pretty rough country and do a great job of putting the videos together and editing. So um, go check that out. Link to their channel is right here. And if you want to subscribe to my channel for various outdoor videos, um, click up here. And if you want to watch some other videos from me, click here. That's it, and see you next week-ish.